Hello, everyone, and welcome to a really exciting and cutting-edge topic in AI. We often think of AI in two ways. There's machine learning, which is great at pattern recognition and gut feelings, and then there's old-school symbolic AI, which is based on logic and hard-coded rules. What if we could get the best of both worlds? That's exactly what we're going to do today. We are going to build a neuro-symbolic reinforcement learning agent from scratch. We'll create an agent that learns to solve the classic cart pole balancing problem using a hybrid brain. One part of its brain will be a fast, dynamic echo state network, providing the neuro component. The other part will be a symbolic reasoning module, a set of human-defined rules that provide the symbolic common sense. We'll code every component, see how they work together, and train the agent to master the game. This is a fantastic look into the future of building more robust and interpretable AI systems. Let's get started. The complete source code for this project is available on our GitHub repository. Just follow the link in the video description to check it out. So, what is the big idea behind our neurosymbolic agent? We're essentially trying to give our AI two different ways of thinking, much like humans do. First, we have our symbolic reasoning module. You can think of this as system two thinking. It's slow, deliberate, and based on logical rules that we explicitly write. It's our AI's common sense or rule book. For the card poll game, a rule might be as simple as, if the pole is leaning too far to the left, it's a good idea to push the cart to the left. This part of the brain is easy for us to understand and debug, but it might not be able to handle every complex situation. Second, we have the Echo State Network, or ESN. This is our system one thinking. It's fast, intuitive, and based on recognizing complex patterns over time. It's a special kind of recurrent neural network that maintains a rich, echoing memory of recent events. It doesn't operate on explicit rules. It just develops a gut feeling about the state of the game. Our agent's strategy is to listen to both its logical rulebook and its neural intuition, combine their advice, and then make a final, more robust decision on which action to take. Let's start with the most straightforward part of our hybrid brain, the symbolic reasoning module. This class is our explicit rule book. In the init method, we define a dictionary called rules. Each key corresponds to a piece of the game's state, like pole angle, and its value is a lambda function that represents our rule. For example, the pole angle rule says, if the angle is very negative, leaning left, strongly suggest moving left by outputting 0 0.9, 0 0.1. If it's very positive, leaning right, strongly suggest moving right with 0 0.1, 0 0.9. Otherwise, if it's balanced, have no opinion and output, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. We have a similar rule for the cart's position. The forward method takes the current state of the game, extracts the relevant values, applies all the rules, and then simply averages their suggested action probabilities to get a final symbolic output. We also have a refine rules method, which is a very simple way to make our symbolic system adaptable. After an episode, if the overall feedback was negative, it will update the rules to be a little less confident in their suggestions. It's a basic form of learning for our logical system. Now for the neuro part of our agent, the neurosymbolic echo state network. Let's really take our time here and focus on how we initialize its core component, the reservoir, because this is what makes an echo state network so unique and powerful. An ESN is a type of recurrent neural network, but it has a revolutionary twist. In a traditional RNN, you use backpropagation to painstakingly train all the weights, which can be slow and difficult. The incredible idea behind ESNs is that we can create a large, complex, randomly generated network and keep its internal connections fixed. We never train them. This fixed network is called the reservoir. Think of it like a complex wind chime. You don't train the wind chime, you just build it. But when a gust of wind, 
our input signal blows through it, the chime produces a very rich and complex set of sounds or echoes that are a high dimensional representation of that simple gust. The reservoir works the same way. It's an echo chamber for data. When we feed our game state into it, the signal bounces around this fixed random structure, creating complex patterns and dynamic states that capture the history of what has happened. So how do we build this? First, we create self, win. This is the input weight matrix. It's our door into the reservoir. Its job is to take the low dimensional game state, which has four features, and project it into our much higher dimensional reservoir space, which has 150 features. We initialize it with small random numbers. Next, and this is the most important part, we create self W, the recurrent weight matrix that defines the internal connections of the reservoir itself. This is a careful four-step process. We start with a dense matrix of random numbers using NumPy. We introduce sparsity. We create another random matrix of the same size and use it as a mask to set about 90% of the connections in W to zero. Why do this? A sparse reservoir is often more stable, computationally cheaper, and can lead to richer, more decoupled dynamics. Now for the magic, spectral radius scaling. This is a crucial mathematical step to ensure the reservoir has the echo state property. We calculate the eigenvalues of our matrix W and find the one with the largest absolute value. This is the spectral radius. We then scale our entire W matrix by this value. This ensures that the reservoir is stable. It prevents the echoes from either dying out to zero instantly or exploding into infinity. We scale it by a factor of 0.9 to keep it just on the edge of stability, which is often where the most interesting dynamics occur. Finally, we convert our NumPy matrix W into a PyTorch tensor. Notice very carefully that we are not wrapping it in nen.parameter. This is how we tell PyTorch that these weights are fixed and should not be updated during training. This is the defining characteristic of an echo state network and what makes it so efficient. Continuing in our init method, let's assemble the rest of our hybrid model. After creating our input and reservoir weights, we initialize self-bot state, which is a vector of zeros that will hold the activation values of our reservoir neurons at each time step. Next, we create an instance of our symbolic reasoning module, the rulebook we defined earlier. This means every instance of our ESN will contain its own little logical component. Now for the most important part of an echo state network, the readout layer. This is a simple NN dot linear layer. The revolutionary idea of ESNs is that the randomly initialized reservoir is powerful enough to generate useful features. So the only part we actually need to train is this final readout layer. It reads the state of the reservoir and learns to map those complex patterns to a useful output. But look at its input dimension, reservoir dimension plus symbolic dimension. Our readout layer isn't just looking at the neural reservoir. It's also looking at the output from our symbolic module. This is the point of fusion where our two ways of thinking, the neural and the symbolic, come together before a final decision is made. Now, let's trace the flow of data through our model in the forward pass. This is what happens every time our agent needs to decide on an action. First, we update the state of our reservoir. The new state is calculated by taking the current input x multiplied by the input weights, adding it to the previous state of the reservoir multiplied by the recurrent weights, and then passing the result through a TH activation function. This is what makes it a recurrence network. Its current state depends on its previous state. This is our neuro signal. Second, in parallel, we call the forward method of our symbolic module. This takes the same input x and uses our hard-coded rules to produce the symbolic signal. 
Third, we combine these two signals. We use TorchCat to simply concatenate the reservoir state vector and the symbolic output vector into one larger vector. Finally, this combined vector, which now contains both the intuitive patterns from the ESN and the logical suggestions from the rulebook, is passed to our single trainable readout layer, which produces the final output scores for each possible action. The output of our neurosymbolic echo state network is a set of raw scores, or logits, for each action. To use this in our reinforcement learning context, we need to convert these scores into probabilities. That's the simple job of our policy network class. It's a very thin wrapper. In its init method, it takes our ESN model as an argument and also defines a softmax layer. In its forward method, it first calls our ESN to get the raw scores. Then, it passes those scores through the softmax layer. Softmax is a mathematical function that takes a vector of numbers and turns it into a probability distribution, a new vector where all the elements are between 0 and 1, and they all sum up to 1. The output of this policy network is what we'll use to actually choose an action. All right. It's time to bring everything together in our main train function. This is where we set up the entire reinforcement learning experiment. First, we set our device to a GPU if one is available, and we create our Cardpole v1 environment using the gym library. We then get the input dot and dim and action dot dim directly from the environment itself. This makes our code flexible. We also choose the size of our ESN's reservoir. This is a key hyperparameter we could tune later. Next, we instantiate our models. We first create the neurosymbolic echo state network, and then we wrap it inside our policy network. Finally, we set up our optimizer. We're using the popular Adam optimizer. Now look closely at what we pass it. Policy.parameters. This is a key detail of using an echo state network. Because we defined the reservoir weights, self.w as simple tensors and not nn.parameters, they are not included in this list. The only trainable parameters here are from the ESN's readout layer and the softmax layer. This is why ESNs can be so fast, we are only optimizing a very small part of the network. Now we enter the main training loop, which runs for a set number of episodes. Each episode is like one full attempt or one life for our agent. Inside the while not done loop, our agent interacts with the world. At each time step, first, it takes the current state and passes it to our policy network to get a vector of action probabilities. Second, instead of just greedily picking the action with the highest probability, we create a categorical distribution and sample from it. This sampling introduces exploration, allowing the agent to try out different actions and discover what works best. Third, we store the log probability of the action we just sampled. This is crucial for the policy gradient calculation we'll do later. Fourth, we perform the action in the environment using ENV step. The environment responds with the next observation, a reward and flags to tell us if the episode has terminated. Finally, we store the reward we received and update our state to be the next state we just observed, getting ready for the next iteration of the loop. This slide shows the part of the code where our hybrid neurosymbolic approach really comes to life. Inside the step loop, after our agent acts and receives a reward, we update a feedback dictionary. This is separate from the main reinforcement learning process. We're essentially creating a simple credit assignment system for our rules. For instance, for the pole angle, we check if the pole is nicely centered. If it is, we add the positive reward to its feedback score. If it's tilted too far, we give it a penalty of negative 1, regardless of the reward from the environment. We do the same for the card's position. This helps us track if the states where our rules are active are generally leading to good or bad outcomes. Then, crucially, after the entire episode is finished, we call ESN.refineSymbolicRules and pass in this accumulated feedback dictionary. 
This is where our symbolic module gets a chance to learn and adapt its own rules based on the overall performance during that episode, making our entire system more adaptive. After each episode concludes, our agent needs to reflect on what happened and learn from its experience. This is done using the reinforce policy gradient algorithm. First, we need to figure out how good each action really was. Instead of just using the immediate reward, we calculate the discounted return. We loop through the rewards backwards, and for each step, we calculate R, which is the immediate reward plus the discounted value of all future rewards. This gives us a better estimate of the long-term value of being in a particular state. Second, we standardize these returns by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. This is a very common and effective trick in policy gradient methods that help stabilize training. Third, we calculate our loss. The formula is simple but powerful. For each action taken, we multiply its log probability by the standardized discounted return we just calculated. The intuition is this. If an action led to a high positive return, we want to make that action more likely in the future. If it led to a low negative return, we want to make it less likely. Finally, we perform the standard PyTorch update steps. We zero the gradients, backpropagate our calculated loss, and take a step with our optimizer. This updates the trainable weights in our ESN's readout layer, making our policy smarter for the next episode. So, let's step back and look at the amazing hybrid AI we've built today. This is not a standard black box neural network. We created a symbolic module, a transparent rule book that injects our own domain knowledge into the agent. We also built an echo state network, a fascinating type of recurrent network that uses a fixed reservoir to efficiently capture temporal patterns. We then fuse these two components into a single neurosymbolic model, creating an agent that benefits from both logic and intuition. Finally, we successfully trained this hybrid brain using the classic reinforce algorithm to solve the cart pole challenge. This project is a fantastic starting point into the world of neurosymbolic AI. From here, you could try designing more complex and adaptive symbolic rules. You could swap out the echo state network for other popular architectures like an LSTM or even a small transformer. Or you could try applying this powerful hybrid approach to much more complex reinforcement learning problems. Thank you so much for joining me on this deep dive. If you enjoyed building this and learned something new, please give the video a like and subscribe for more tutorials on cutting-edge AI concepts. Happy coding!